Hi, this is Van, backyard carpenter in a backyard, James in the house painting. What I want to point out is this is that composite material that goes in the corner. And we actually had it underneath our tent over there. It's got a lot of our material. And then when we came back two days later, it was warped up. So this composite material will warp up pretty bad. Now it looks a whole lot better when we first found it because we put it inside a catch-all room and we put some bag of grout, which grout's real heavy. So it's going to be a lot of fun trying to cut this stuff because it's kind of warped up, but I can do it. I managed to cut a piece to go in the corner because this is corner molding and as you can see, it pretty well warped. Again, what we did is we had this underneath our little catch-all tent that has all the material for about two days, which is right there. And the material, being composite material that it is, it warped. So I managed to get a piece put in the corner, but this is what it looks like. Well, we're getting finished with the living room, and I painted the window frames. We were trying to decide whether to paint them the dark color or the light color side of the light color was probably better. And so now I'm going to paint the mantle the same color as the upper part, which is a cream. And then I'll paint the front door. And then the living room will be done. All right. Then we'll move on to the kitchen. I uh, removing the flooring oh, of the kitchen. Okay, we're removing the flooring out of the kitchen. The little tiny stove was delivered yesterday, which is so cute. It's a little tiny apartment stove. It's 20 inches wide, which will be plenty for him. And a tiny little dishwasher that is 18 inches wide, which will fit fine in this little tiny kitchen. So it's now, going along. Now the cabinet's going to have to be removed for us to be able to do this. We have the plumber coming. Another day, uh, electrician's already moved the 220 for the stove over to there. And now the cabinet's going to have to be removed for us to be able to put this. But the next thing we're going to be working on is removing this flooring. So we're going to have to put up some little uh, barriers, dust barriers, so that we protect the rest of the house and also probably put dust barrier on top of that. And a dust barrier on the but. Um, the refrigerator's going to have to move out of the room, and we'll put it on an extension cord. What we are looking at is the original subflooring, 1947. And if I can get down long enough with, and my knees not break, uh, we're trying to remove that flooring up to the hardwood floors, what we think that is. Right? So that probably had hardwood floor all throughout the house. Now I've got to remove all this because we're going to tile this, which means then we put down a hardy backer board and then the tile. And that gap that you see right there is where the original wall sat and you can see where we cut it off. So I've got to finish putting up uh, plastic to uh, protect the rest of the house. And I've already started right here covering up the coffee station. Jane continues to do her thing on painting and the caulking queen's really going to have to do that corner. <laughs> so nothing about it was 90 degrees. So anyway this is where we are right now with the cute little stove, cute little dishwasher that's all going to go right there. Because I'm getting ready to rip out the flooring with that blade and the circular saw, I'm having to remove this blade, which is for paneling. So what I've already done is loosened up with uh, this wrench with a uh, 7 sixteenths. No, half inch. Half inch to loosen this up. Okay. All right. And the reason I got that screwdriver in there, that's to, to hold it to the housing so that I can be able to remove it. All right. Now, move the guard out of the way. 
and remove that blade. But anyway, I'll be right back. So I was able to use both hands <laughs> to get the new blade in place. And you notice that I've got it. So those are, because it's going to spin this away, it's got to go that away, all right? So also I'm doing, you know, there's usually an arrow pointing, but since this blade's been used so many times, it's kind of worn out. So now I'm going to put that there and what it says on the instructions is not to over tighten it all right so i'm just going to take her down because what happens it will kind of tighten up on its own okay and then i'm just going to take this all right and flip that back out to tighten okay tighten and tighten it up all right so once i get this done i'll take it inside and I'll do the depth according to just getting down to the hardwood floor that's underneath all this other flooring that we have to remove. All right, Dana's going to have to interpret. I will interpret. What Dan is saying. What he's saying. All right, what I got to do is set the depth of this blade just to cut out this material. So he's setting the depth of the blade to cut out the linoleum that's on the top. All right, so I just want to barely skim across the hardwood floor that's there. All right. Oh, okay, so he's barely skimming across the hardwood. All right. Now I got to put my gloves on. <clears throat> All right. Here. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this as a guideline. That. Oh, okay. He's right. using the existing linoleum as a guideline. Here we go. tar paper that they glued down. Oh my goodness. And it walks up against the wall next to the gas pipe. It's got to be moved. It's, uh, I just want to show that's, there you go, with the backing. So they just put it down with staples. Oh my goodness. All right, so that's what we got so far. That is what I got to remove wow. off the flooring. That should be fun. I really question for a section of only that big, not very big, should there really have been this many staples? <laughs> so, I guess the point is, when you're doing something, craftsmen, artisans, and skilled workers, just remember, especially when you're in the kitchen, that people are going to remodel constantly. And I know they call themselves on a make sure that the flooring stayed down, but uh, again, you know, and again, the length of these babies, nearly two inches. I don't think it was necessary to keep that floor down. But anyway, on we go. Sometimes I question artisans and craftsmen and skilled labor in the past. Now this house was built in 1947, had multi-layers a flooring on the kitchen floor and I really question was it really necessary to put this many staples in that small little section especially as long as they were I'm just you know kitchens have got to be redesigned redone constantly so was it really necessary to put that many staples that's the question of the day
you can see what a mess the floor is. And what's hindering making it up is all these little tiny staples all over this layer, which is a second layer of flooring, which causes it to just come up in chips instead of coming up in cold squares. What a mess. But it will be beautiful when we're finished. <laughs>